can we um, instill consciousness into other beings? Because that's a sad thought that whatever this thing inside our minds that hopes and dreams and fears and loves can all die. Yeah, but I think you already know the answer to that question. Um, I have a robot lawnmower at home. My kids call it CC, cool car. It's a robo mo, And it, the way it works, it has an electric field around the perimeter and it just tell it the, the area. And it, it, it goes out and goes from its base station, just mows a bit. Gets to the perimeter, detects perimeter, and then chooses a random angle, ro rotates around and goes on. Yeah. But my kids call it cool cutter. It's a she. I don't know why it's a she. They just, they, when they were like quite young, they called it, um, I don't want to be sexist there. It could be a he, but they liked. Um, <laughs> they, they gendered the lawnmower? They gendered the lawnmower. Okay. Yeah, why not? But I was thinking this lawnmower, if you apply integrated information theory to the lawnmower, the lawnmower is conscious. Now, information, integrated information theory um, is that people say it's a flawed way of measuring consciousness, but I don't think it is. I think assembly theory actually measures consciousness in the same way. Consciousness is something that is generated over a population of objects of humans. Consciousness didn't suddenly spring in. Our consciousness has evolved together, right? The, f the fact we're here and the robots we leave behind, they all have some of that. So we won't lose it all. Sure, consciousness requires that we have many models being generated. It's not just one domain specific AI, right? I think the, the way to create consciousness, I'm going to say unashamedly, the best way to, write a chemical con to make a consciousness is in a chemical system mm. because you just have access to many more states. And the problem right now we're making silicon consciousness is you just don't have enough states. So there are more possible states, or sorry, there are more possible configurations possible in your brain than there are atoms in the universe. And you can you can switch between them. You can't do that on a core i10. It's got it's got 10 billion, 12 billion, 14 billion transistors, but you can't you can't reconfigure them as dynamically. Well, you've shared this intuition a few times already that the larger number of states somehow correlates to greater possibility of life. But it's also possible that constraints are essential here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but but coming back to the you worry that something's lost. I agree. Um, but I think that, um, you know, we will get to an AGI, but I wonder if it's, if it's not, it can't be separate from human, it can't be separate from human consciousness because the causal chain that produced it came from humans. So the, what I kind of try and suggest heavily to people worry about, um, the existential threat of AI saying, I mean, you put it much more elegantly earlier, like we should worry about algorithms on dumb algorithms written by human beings on twitter right. driving us insane right and doing acting in odd ways yeah i think intelligence this is what i i have been ineloquent in trying to describe it partially because i try not to think too deeply through this stuff because then you become a philosopher i, I still aspire to actually building a bunch of stuff but my sense is super intelligence leads to um, deep integration into human society. So like in intelligence is strongly correlated. Like uh, intelligence, the way we conceive of intelligence materializes as a thing that becomes a fun entity to have at a party and with, yeah. with humans. So like uh, it's a mix of wit, intelligence, humor, like intelligence, like knowledge, ability to do uh, reasoning and so on, but also humor, emotional intelligence, ability to love, to uh, to dream, to share those dreams, to, um, to play the game of um, human civilization, the push and pull, the whole dance of it, the whole dance mm -hmm. of life. And I think that kind of super intelligent being is not the thing that uh, that worries me. I think that ultimately will enrich life. It's again, the dumb algorithms, the dumb algorithms that scale in the hands of people that are too, don't study history, that don't study human psychology and human nature, just applying too broadly for selfish near-term interests. That's the biggest danger. Yeah, I think it's not a new danger, right? Um, right. I now know how I should use Twitter and how I shouldn't use Twitter, right? Okay. Um, I like to provoke people into thinking. I don't want to provoke people into outrage. It's not fun. It's not a good thing for humans to do, right? 
And I think that when you get people into outrage, they, they take sides. Mm -hmm. And taking sides is really bad. But I think that we're all beginning to see this. And I think that actually, I'm very optimistic about how things will evolve. Because, you know, <laughs> I wonder how much how much productivity has Twitter and social media taken out of humanity? Because how many now? Um, I mean, so the good thing about Twitter is it gives power, so it gives voice to minorities, right? And uh, and that's good in some degree. But I wonder how much voice does it give to all sorts of other problems that don't need that this emerge. By the way, when you say minorities, I think, uh, or at least if I were to agree with you, what I would say is minorities broadly defined, any yeah. small groups yeah. uh, of people that, uh, it magnifies the concerns of yeah. the small versus the big. That is good to some degree. Um, but I think, I mean, I have to be careful because I think I have a, a very, I mean, I think that the world isn't that broken, right? I think the world is a pretty cool place. I think yeah. academia is really great. I think, climate change presents a really interesting problem for humanity that we will solve. I like how you said it. It's a pretty cool problem <laughs> but it, for civilization. It's a big one. Well, it's a sure. bunch of, I want to- There's a bunch of really, yeah. really big problems that if solved can significantly improve the quality of life for a large, it, that ultimately is what we're trying to do. Improve like how awesome life is for the maximum number of people. Yeah, and I think the the, the coming back to consciousness I don't think the uni universe is doomed to heat death, right? It's one of the optimists. That's why I want to kind of nudge you into thinking that time is fundamental. Because if time is fundamental, then suddenly you don't have to give it back. Mm -hmm. the, uni the universe just constructs stuff. you know. And what we see around us in our construction, I know everyone's worried about how fragile civilization is. And I mean, look at the fundamentals. We're, the good, we're good until the, uh, the, the, the sun expands, right? We've got quite a lot of resource on Earth. We're trying to be quite cooperative. Humans are nice to each other when they uh, when they're not under enormous stress. But coming back to the consciousness thing, are we going to send human beings to Mars or conscious robots to Mars, or are we going to send some hybrid? Um, and, and I don't know the answer to that question right now. I guess you know Elon's going to have a pretty good go at getting there. I'm not yeah. sure whether I have my. I have my doubts, but I'm not qualified. You know, I'm sure people have their doubts that computation works. Yeah. But 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 I've got it working, and I you know. <laughs> and most most of the uh, cool technologies we have today, and take for granted, like the airplane, aforementioned airplane, were things that uh, people doubted. Every yeah. like majority of people doubted before they uh, came to life. Yeah. And they come to life. And speaking of hybrid AI and humans. It's fascinating to think about all the different ways that hybridization, that merger can happen. I mean, we have currently have the smartphone, so there's already a hybrid, but there's all kinds of ways that hybrid happens, how we and other technology play together, like a computer, mm -hmm. how that changes the fabric of human civilization is like wide open, who knows? Who knows if you remove, if you remove cancer, if you remove major diseases from uh, humanity, uh, there's going to be a bunch of consequences we're not anticipating. Yeah. Uh, many of them positive, but uh, many of them negative. Many, many, many of them, most of them, at least I hope, are weird and wonderful and, and fun in ways that are totally unexpected. And we sitting on a porch with a bottle of Jack Daniels and a rocker will say, kids these days don't appreciate how hard we had it back in the day.